study has shown that energy drinks can be very dangerous for children. And here with the latest information is Dr. J.J. Levenstein. And uh, what did the studies find, doctor? Well, a study that was published in November of this year looked at 10,000 calls to U.S. poison control about energy drink overconsumption. Fully 40% of those calls were in children under the age of six. Wow. What? Is, yeah, it's very disturbing because most parents didn't really know how they got a hold of these, but the kids found the energy drinks in the fridge or on the counter. probably can't take that much to, for a young son under six to yeah. get too much of this stuff. No, it's because true because most of the energy drinks have 200 or more milligrams of caffeine yeah. in them, and 100 milligrams is considered the upper threshold for um, for safety in, sure. in young children. You have some here laid out. Take us through, because one of the things you're really focused on is what? Caffeine. Is, is caffeine, because caffeine is the main component that is, is potentially harmful in children. Sugar is the second because mm -hmm. there's excessive calories, but also there's a lot of natural ingredients that are added to these that are not regulated by the FDA, and they have caffeine-like pro uh, properties, so there can be additive effects, even though the caffeine may look very benign, right. what's added to it may add may. to the effect, and there's no standards that tell us what levels are safe or not. So a standard cola, for example, might have 35 to 50 milligrams of caffeine, as well as a cup of coffee, and maybe mm -hmm. if you add a shot of espresso, you get up to 100 or so. But then when you start to get into the popular energy drinks, and especially the, uh, the concentrated forms of caffeine, yeah. we're talking 200 to 300, sometimes even up to 500 milligrams per serving. Which really, you know, if you're chugging down a couple of yeah. them, can really, really amp you up as an adult. As an adult. And certainly as a kid can lead to hypertension. Kids have had reported seizures with these and also uh, heart rhythm disturbances. And if there's sure. any underlying illness in a kid that's not recognized mm -hmm. to that point, it can be very, very dangerous, especially in the setting of sports or exercise. Well, sure. let's talk about these natural additives. What, what are we talking about yeah, here? So I'm going to give you some names because it's important to understand what is being added that may yeah. be problematic. One is a, a medication or a, a natural drug called guarana. And guarana has caffeine-like effects, so it's excitatory. It can raise the heart rate, it can raise the blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Ginseng, which we think of as an Asian component right. to teas yeah. or various tonics, has energy-boosting properties as well and may raise blood pressure. There are things called L-taurine, which is an amino acid, inositol, yohimbine. These are put into these drinks. But again, there's no testing done to know what are safe levels, not only mm -hmm. in adults, but also in children. And what are the toxic levels? Those aren't defined either because labeling requirements in these drinks fall under the natural category. And so yeah. these companies are not required to label what's in them or how much. And Which some is have, alarming. Yeah, it is alarming. And some have voluntarily stepped up to the plate and put how much caffeine is in there, but the other ingredients yeah. still remain uh, Which a mystery. Which makes me think they're trying to hide something, but that's just me. I have to go back to something you said early on about these kids who are drinking. I, I, is this a... Is it common? Like, you know, I, I don't get why parents would w allow that, but that's just me. But Well, energy drink accident? consumption has increased fivefold over the last few years. As soda consumption has come down, as we've been more aware of obesity yeah. and getting those numbers down, actually the marketing of these drinks has become so successful that you can't walk on a college campus during yeah, they, finals yeah. and yeah. not see away, somebody yeah. giving these away. And of course, then kids get a little kick from that. And before you know it, they're buying it. Yeah. So the marketing really... Uh, it speaks to all ages now. Any kid, a little yeah. kid, could walk into a market and without having to show an ID could potentially buy one of these and not be stopped because there's no regulation there. So it really is up to a parent to say, okay, if I've right. got these in my house, they need to be up and away from my children and not be part of their lifestyle or exposure because the consequences to a little one can be very dangerous. Are these when, addictive? They can be addictive because caffeine, we know, certainly is an addictive uh, medication. Um, the sugar in them and the sugar rush that kids get uh, and the fall and the crash they get afterwards makes them want to have more. Mm -hmm. And there are concerns also about these drinks being um, misunderstood as drinks for energy for sports. And if they are drunk before competitive sports or vigorous physical mm -hmm. activity, they can dangerously raise the heart rate and blood pressure and lead to collapse on the field. Well, I've seen this with kids who are, are doing finals all the day, you know, around uh, May, June when they have their final finals. Mm -hmm. My daughter, Alex, would sneak those into the house to, right. to help her keep up to study 
till 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. That's a hard thing. I mean, that's yeah. a real big it's, it's a problem about what the, yeah. what the problem we've created in our society. Yeah. Kids are feeling under pressure to yeah. drink they these are, They are, and you want to guide them because you're parents and you want to say no, but they're going to go, oh, yeah, well, then what? Yeah, yeah. then and what? Where, where do we go? What do you suggest? So I, I think there's really no place for energy drinks in childhood, uh, and they really are being um, uh, very, very much uh, put on the back burner just because of the potential for harm. That being said, mm -hmm. there are natural sources of caffeine in chocolate, in hot chocolate. Oh, well, that's uh, if, a win. If, if, it's a if, win, win right there. If <laughs> caffeine is going to make its way into your child's life, you know, you really just need to know how much is going to be there. And in little kids, it really yeah. doesn't have any place. But in bigger kids, you know, if they have a soda with caffeine in it before they uh, uh, have a, a an exam or if they needed to keep themselves awake, that's probably far safer to deal with 30, 40 milligrams, which we know is generally recognized as mm -hmm. safe, than amping that up four or five fold and taking the risk that there could be a, a, an adverse reaction. Sure. So let me just ask you, when kids are tired, what, what are another seeking energy drink that we okay. can look for? So seeking energy drinks, if you make smoothies that are full of good fruits and veggies and good nutrients, yeah. uh, supplying them with good pr uh, sources of protein, so whether it's peanut butter, whether whether it's a protein bar, sure. whether it's just a good turkey sandwich, something like that is great. Adequate sleep, that's so, so important and so hard yeah. to get, especially yeah. around yeah. exam time. And teach your kids to really love water and embrace that mm -hmm. as a very good, hydrating, energy-provoking beverage, because yeah, indeed it is.